What's up y'all, Aaron from Unison here. Today I want to talk about layering sounds. There's a lot of times where you might be listening to music and you're like, wow, it sounds so rich. It sounds so deep and thick. Why doesn't my music sound like that? Well, today I want to show you some different ways that might help and give you a better sense of how you can layer sounds and make your tracks feel more full and get it to have that depth that you might want. I'm going to be going over a few different things and that's going to be covering layering sounds in terms of choosing the right sound source, EQing properly, tuning samples properly, using multiple sounds to fill the frequency spectrum, and learning how to give each sound its own space in the mix. So that way everything sounds good but it also feels full and rich. Alright let's go ahead and jump into Ableton. Alright, so this is a project that I made and I just want to dive into a couple of different elements here just to show different ways that I layered. So the first thing we'll dive into are the synths, mainly the chords and how the chords were built. So this is actually a MIDI chord progression from Unison Essentials Advanced MIDI and it is right here. It's this one, number seven right here. And I just went and dragged and dropped here. And so if we dive into the chords here, we can see that it's using mainly major and minor ninths. And so this particular chord progression is in the key of G flat major. And so essentially most chords, the bases are triads when you're building chords. And so a triad is just three notes. In this particular instance, it's D sharp, F sharp, and A sharp. And then on top, we got a minor seventh and also a minor ninth. And so by adding these two additional notes, we have a much more richer sounding chord. It sounds like this versus just these three. And so additionally, you can go and add an octave root note below. And so here we have the root note, just an octave below, so that way it makes the chord feel more full in the low end also, versus without. And so by doing that, you can go and just use one particular sound and fill it out much more versus having to use multiple sounds and creating a more messy mix. Instead, you just have one sound and it sounds very rich and full from the get go. All right, so let's say, you know, we have these nice full chords, but we want to add some sub bass to this. Well, we have here these chords with uh, these lower bass notes. And so if we play it, we look on this EQ here, we see some peaks going on around, you know, 60 hertz and also around 40. And so if we were to add bass, I have some bass here. You know, they're going to be clashing with each other. If we look at the bass now, look at the bass is peaking around 30 mainly, but also there's some up here in the 60, 40, which is also happening as well over here too, around 60. So what I would do is go ahead and roll off those lows in the chords to allow it to come through. Now, if you go and do that though, if you listen to just the chords, you can hardly even hear these lower notes. So it doesn't really make sense to keep them in here. So when I had the bass come in, I went ahead and just took out those notes and just dropped them into this sub layer here. And so now when I play it over here, go ahead and reactivate this EQ and together. sounds much more nicer. There's nothing fighting with each other and it keeps that low end nice and clean because now only this is coming through. So give each sound its own space in terms of the frequency range. Also panning too. Um, I wouldn't go and pan bass. Usually you want to keep bass mono, but putting the chords a little bit to the right to allow for other elements to come through can help as well. So definitely give each sound its own space in terms of the mix and in terms of EQing and that will really help in terms of layering sounds and giving that more full feeling. Moving on to the most energetic part of the song, we have here more layers which are each kind of individually doing their own thing to help fill out the entire frequency spectrum. And so, you know, we have our bass chords here and the sub sounds like this. 
but then we can go ahead and add this kind of like mid frequency layer. And it just has a bit more brightness added to this main layer. And so for this, I went ahead and rolled off most of the lows from this layer here, because a lot of that is coming from this layer here and also the sub as well. So kind of using this as like a bit more of a mid layer, it helps even more to fill everything out. Then additionally, we have this pad layer as well, which adds even more brightness to it. And so if we look here, we can see that the spectrum is starting to get filled out. So let's look again, just these two elements, the bass and the bass chords. You know, it's mainly all in the lower end. But as we add these layers, sonically, it's filling everything out, but also on this frequency spectrum, it's filling everything out too. So by kind of giving each layer its own space in the frequency range, but also sonically by panning elements and also by finding sounds that work well with each other that aren't clashing sonically, but kind of accompany each other, you can get a more rich sound and it feels like there's more depth to it. Moving over to the drum sounds, I wanted to focus mainly on this clap sound that I have. And so this clap consists of three different layers. They all sound like this. I have this clap here, this snap sound that I pitch down, and then this percussive sound. And so each one has its own function within the entirety of the group. And so this is kind of like the bass here. This is to give it a bit more body, which is why I went ahead and pitched it down, as you can see here, pitched it down eight semitones. And then this percussive sound is just to give it a bit more of that top end that was kind of taken away when I went and pitched this down. And so all together, it sounds like this. And so each one is also EQ'd differently. This one, since most of it is body, I went ahead and just took out the lows to allow for this to come in. I also didn't want to give too much lows because I don't want it to clash with the sub and anything else that might be taking up the lower frequency range in the overall mix. And then also that just gives this sound a bit more character as well. So if I just solo these two layers versus without, and then with, it just adds a nice extra snap to it. And then this other layer, it just adds that extra top end to it. Then once I've gone through and layered all the sounds, I'll go ahead and group them all together. And in this particular instance, I went ahead and used the glue compressor and, and a little bit of additional EQ on here, as well as some reverb. I use the glue compressor to go ahead and glue all the sounds together. So that way if they're EQ'd well, then when you use the glue compressor, they'll really mesh well with each other. And then of course, I just went ahead and used the EQ to EQ out anything additional that I may not want in the combined sound. And then I thought a little bit of reverb would blend nicely in with this. Here it is without the reverb and here it is with. And then actually, let me go ahead and turn everything off. So that's the sound and then with everything. And so it's very subtle in terms of everything, but it just gives it a bit more of a nicer punch and it sits better in the mix as well. You can pretty much apply this technique to any element in your song. I've also applied it to the kick here, just in the chorus section. Prior to that, I went ahead and just kept the one kick. And I've also rolled off some of the highs so that way it's not really a protruding kick until we get to the chorus. It has this additional layer with a bit more top end to add a bit more energy in the kick, especially with everything else. There's more percussion going on. The snare has a bit more energy as you can hear. And then of course, what I was showing you earlier with all of the synths and everything, having a lot more energy by all the different layers as well. All together, if we go back to looking at our spectrum on the master, you can, you can see there that the spectrum is much more filled out versus over here. There's definitely a, a nice balance there, but it really shines once it gets to this chorus section.
The last thing I wanted to talk about is using atmosphere and just various effects to kind of create this atmospheric bed for your entire song. So when you're making a song, typically you'll go and you'll have your sense in your drums and maybe a lead or vocals, whatever it might be. But adding that extra depth and richness to your song by adding these additional effects can really help it to feel full. So down here I have this Atmos group and it just has like this sound here. And it's not really a main focus or anything like that, but it's just a nice layer to kind of throw in the background of your song. It sounds like this in context. And then there's also this other sound that I have here. And I just have that on the first clap of each bar. Just to make that first impact just hit a little bit more harder, but also in a very subtle way. There's also additionally this sound here. Just has some echo on it and it's filtered down. So it just makes for a nice transition kind of sounds as well when you're switching over different sections. Additionally here in the beginning we have these other two atmospheric sounds. Both of those. So in context. And so by throwing in these background effects or even using Foley or just other sounds, it will help to fill up the frequency spectrum even more so on top of the different layering that we already have gone over. So just to recap, we went over building rich chords by adding those major or minor sevens and ninths on top of typical triads, as well as adding an octave root note to just fill the spectrum when it comes to chords. Now on top of that, you can also go and take out the lower root note and just throw it into a bass patch and you can go ahead and EQ each of those so that way they, it just fills very nice between the low end all the way up to you know the higher end of the spectrum as well. We also went over filling up the frequency spectrum and that was by taking multiple synth layers and giving them each their own unique space in the spectrum and that was by having that higher end layer as well as having a bass layer which was like those nice round chords that kind of filled up the mid-range as well as having a more sustained pad that just had a brighter tone to it and so all together it just made a very nice rich sound and then additionally we also talked about layering drum sounds you know finding different drum sounds that can make a nice round snare or clap or whatever it is you might be building out. Same thing with your kick as well as any other percussion that you might want to go and layer up like that. You can do it with pretty much any element in your track. We also talked about adding atmosphere to the background of your track to give it more depth as well by using little effects spread out through the song that aren't necessarily at the front of the mix but they go and they add that additional depth to the song. Most of the sounds used in this demo are from Unison's Essential Packs. There will be a link in the description below where you can pick these up if you're interested. Well, that's it for me for today. If you found this video helpful, please consider subscribing to the channel, drop a like on the video, and if you have any other ways that might help you with layering sounds, please drop a comment below. Thanks so much for watching. We'll see you next time.